The tragic Charfield Railway disaster of 1928 has left a haunting mystery in the memory of the town's residents. On October 10, 1928, a mere 60 seconds sealed a dire fate for 15 English people. A train loaded with passengers impacted with a goods train in the county of Gloucestershire. With the horrific collision, gas cylinders ignited and within seconds the passenger train was a blazing inferno, consuming everything around it. The crash was a terrifying scene for those people who witnessed it and became a national tragedy for England. Yet, in the aftermath of the burning wreckage and from the charred remains, a mystery emerged. Two small bodies were uncovered at the site, with no apparent identification. To this very day, the identities of the young victims remain unknown. The confounding mystery deepened when, in the years following the crash, sightings were reported of a woman clothed from head to toe in black. The bizarre figure would appear seemingly out of nowhere to place flowers upon the memorial grave. The cause of the crash was determined as followed by the authorities. On Saturday, October 10, 1928, at 4.28am, a mail train bound for Bristol and filled with passengers charged towards the station at Charfield Village in Gloucestershire. The night was later described by witnesses as misty, but railway officials had determined that the visibility was good enough to not bring out foggy weather signalmen. In retrospect, if they had, it may have prevented the entire disaster. Directly ahead of the passenger train, a freight train was shunting across the tracks to the siding. According to the post-crash investigation, Charfield signalman Henry Button had cleared both trains at the station before lighting up the red danger signal to stop the mail train to enable the goods train to safely pass by. However, in the thick night mist, mail train driver Henry Eldington and his fireman Frank Want claimed to have seen the signal as green for clear. The coal continued to be stoked as they continued hurtling towards the station. Only seconds before the collision, Want and Eldington spotted the train ahead of them and rammed on the brakes in a futile attempt to prevent a collision. They then crouched down in readiness for the impact. When the trains collided, the mail train partially derailed, throwing several carriages and the engine off the tracks. The rest of the locomotive wedged into the goods train beneath a railway bridge. Tragically, the lighting of compartments in the mail train used gas illumination and its cylinders were stowed under the front coach cars. The gas ignited on impact, sparking off a massive fire with its flames visible in the night sky from miles away. Villagers living nearby and attendants at the railway station ran down the tracks to assist. Some survivors later gave guilt-ridden accounts of leaving behind fellow passengers who were unable to be pulled free before the flames got too close. The fire swept through the wrecked train, and while rescuers did their best to help, 15 passengers were unable to escape in time, although some reports listed 16 victims in total. Eldington and Wand were found buried in coal and survived. Some of those who perished were so badly burned that they were recognisable to family members only by their personal items and jewellery. Because of this, many relatives of the deceased agreed to a mass grave which was provided by the railway company in which to lay their loved ones to rest. However, not all the personal identifications were routine. Two figures, thought to be those of a young boy and a young girl, possibly brother and sister, were uncovered in the wreckage. Strangely, they continued to remain unidentified and unclaimed in the weeks after the crash. When it seemed evident that no one was going to present to authorities and claim the two bodies, they were interred in the mass grave with the other victims. The grave and memorial were established at St James Church in Charfield. The puzzle of who the children were confounded those dealing with the tragedy. Various theories to explain it surfaced. One strange suggestion was that the two small figures weren't human at all, but ventriloquist dummies. Another popular speculation was that they were not the bodies of children, but rather of diminutive horse-riding jockeys. Some people even claimed that the report was a hoax, drummed up by the media to make the accident appear even more tragic. There was at one stage a rumour that a woman had come forward claiming the bodies were those of her two brothers. However, this report, if it really happened at all, was never confirmed. Regardless, the two small figures remained unidentified. 
As with all good mysteries, the strange events continued. For years following the crash and burial from 1929 to the late 1950s, a woman dressed entirely in black was observed visiting the grave in Charfield, where the victims were buried. Those who claimed to have spotted the unknown woman described her as old, frail, and with an air of great sadness. She was seen to place flowers at the memorial before quickly departing in a chauffeur-driven limousine. No one knew who the woman was or why she visited the memorial. Many wondered if she knew something about the crash which no one else did. Perhaps she was even aware of the identity of the children. Unfortunately, when the woman in black ceased her visits, which had taken place over a 30-year period, her identity and purpose continued to remain an unexplained mystery. Over the decades, the Charfield Railway disaster has been the topic of many books and TV and radio programs. Nick Blackstock's 2009 novel, Something Hidden, describes a fictionalised history for the two unknown children, which also fuels more speculation. Historians wonder if the children were simply orphans with no family to claim them, and whether the woman in black did really know something about the disaster that the rest of the world did not. We may never know the answers to the enigma, which has one last twist. Local legend tells us that in the area surrounding the crash site, witnesses have reported strange apparitions of ghostly children. The small figures stand side by side and hand in hand, silently gazing down the railway tracks. Local residents say they are the unknown brother and sister, patiently waiting for the day someone identifies them, when they can finally rest in peace.